How secure is your digital life? Most people know the basics of online security. Make strong passwords. Don't type your credit card number into shady websites. Ignore emails from Nigerian princes offering you money. But it's 2019, and privacy and security is about so much more than dodging dollar bills from altruistic royalty. Almost everything we do online and on our phones is monitored and tracked. And it might seem like there's nothing you can do to protect yourself from major data breaches or to stop corporations from collecting your data. But you'd be wrong. There are apps out there that can help you live a more secure and private digital life. All right, I'm gonna need you keyboard warriors to hold off on that comment that you're typing. Let's get a disclaimer out of the way. The apps I'm gonna recommend are not going to make you totally 100% bulletproof secure. That's impossible. What they will do is help you live a more secure digital life and limit how much of your data can be collected by large corporations. I just wanted to say that up front so that we're all on the same page. You can finish typing your mean comment now. I'm sure I'll read it later and cry about it. Password managers are a thing every single person should have. If you've never used a password manager, it's amazing. You only have to remember one master password and the app takes care of remembering all the rest of your passwords, which means you can finally stop making your passwords your puppy's name, plus your favorite color, plus your birth year. The password manager will randomly generate strong passwords for you. The two I recommend are 1Password and LastPass. Both are available on almost every platform, both have super convenient browser extensions, and both can generate long, complex passwords for you. LastPass is free, with some advanced features locked behind a paid premium service. Its apps aren't as polished visually or as stable as 1Passwords, and have run into the occasional bug here or there. But you get all the core features for free, and your data is secure behind strong encryption. I recently switched over to 1Password, and its apps are much more cleaner and run much more smoothly, but it'll cost you a monthly fee. But hey, a few bucks a month to know that my bank account and more importantly, my Amazon Prime account have super long, randomly generated passwords is worth it to me. In the end, both 1Password and LastPass are excellent password managers and you need to start using them. Browsers are the way we all access the World Wide Web. There are gateways to the internet. And like any good gate, they should protect us from unforeseen dangers. So when it comes to privacy and protection online, I recommend using Firefox or Brave. I have an Android phone and Brave has now become the default mobile browser on my phone. It's built on the same core structure as Chrome, so it's just as fast and convenient. But unlike Chrome, Brave has built-in ad blocking and protection against third-party cookies and trackers. Firefox has always been a strong contender in the browser world, but its recent focus on data privacy has made it an extremely attractive option. Like Brave, it has protections against trackers, but unlike Brave, it won't automatically block all ads. That's easily solved by installing extensions on your desktop and Android apps, but if you're on iOS, you're out of luck. No extensions there yet. In addition to a safer browser, using a VPN service to encrypt your web traffic is also a great way to be more secure. VPNs can get complicated and we don't have time to get into it in this video, but my colleague David Murphy wrote a great guide on how to choose the right VPN. I'll leave that link below. Let's talk messaging and shopping, two things we all probably do too much of on our phones. I already made a video about messaging, so I'll keep it brief. In an ideal world, we would all be using open source end-to-end -end encrypted messaging platforms like Signal. The reality is much more complicated, but the key here is to make sure your private messages remain private. So use apps that encrypt your texts like Apple's messages or WhatsApp. Obviously iMessage is owned by Apple and WhatsApp is owned by Facebook, so it's up to you how much you trust these companies and their encryption methods. And finally, most of us know not to type our credit card numbers into shady apps or websites. But to be even more secure, it can be a good idea to use Apple Pay or Google Pay wherever possible. Both of these services hide your actual credit card number behind a randomly generated virtual one. So merchants don't ever actually have your real account info. That can be a lifesaver if that merchant, say, has a major data breach. So there you have it. With just a handful of apps and services, you are well on your way to living a safer and more private digital life. Those wealthy, 
big-hearted princes will just have to learn to live with their riches. Let me know in the comments what topics I should cover next, and don't forget to subscribe to Lifehacker. Thanks for watching.